Hi, welcome to the Crypto Dave Antminer R4 review. I have my Antminer currently in the loft, um, largely due to heat reasons. I had it in the office when I first bought it, but it's just so warm in here. Oh. I've uh, actually now popped it in the in the loft. You can um, you can see the Antminer in in action. This is mine in a way here. It has quite simple, really. It has an Ethernet um, cable on the side, separate power supply with several um, power sockets on the side, and one for the um, the motherboard. Uh, on the front of the miner or the top, depending which way you put it, and you can see the mining chips inside here. Now, I'll have a listen to the loudness of the miner now. And you can see here that it's uh, plugged into a power line adapter for my Ethernet, and I'm lucky enough to have power in my loft. So we've had a look at the amp miner itself, the hardware itself, up in the loft mining away. I just wanted to run you through the uh, control panel, which comes with the amp miner. This is one of the nice, um, the nice features I think, is that you can log in. It has its own little web interface, just um, which appears on whatever IP address you've got it run on your local network. So for me, it's 192.168.1.2.10. You go to that. There will be username and, and password prompt. It's the default is just root for both so R double O T just root for both and then when you log in you'll get um, a little overview page there's various other bits and pieces you can do here within the administration changing the passwords there's um, a reboot screen there's an upgrade on where you can upgrade firmware if Bitmain released new firmware you choose the file and it'll up, um, perform an upgrade um, which is quite quite simple and an easy way to do it and um, within the minor configuration this is where you put your pool information I'm mining on slush pool I'll show you the results that I'm getting in a second and then probably the most important screen is the minor status so if you go into here you can see elapsed is just basically the uptime so it's been up for 23 almost 24 days now this is a real-time hash rate and then an average hash rate I think that's probably a five minute average hash rate um, and then here you'll see the different pools that we've got set up in the minor configuration pool one, two, and three. These are just fallback pools if I can't get onto the, the local one. I'm in the UK, so I'm using the EU stratum. But if that fails for any reason, it will jump over to the, to the um, US and then over to uh, Singapore, I think the, the third one is. So you'll see the the pool information here the get works it's done accepted so at the moment we're 714271 if we refresh the page you should see that going up pretty rapidly um it's been a few rejected and some discarded and stale but overall you know it looks pretty healthy this is the ASIC status which is something else you need to be aware of if you start seeing crosses in here it means that you know some of the chips are failing the only other thing i'd say to keep an eye on there's two boards of chips as we saw earlier is the temperature I presume chip one in this board and chip two in that board are the ones that are closest to the center because they always seem to be hotter unfortunately it's a really hot day in the UK which is quite unusual it's a really hot sunny day and the, and the loft's quite hot at the moment so you can see those temperatures are, are reasonably high um, I've never seen them go over 100 there's only one big fan it's a big kind of um, sort of rotary fan similar to you get in air conditioners and that's running at just over 2000 rpm it, it is relatively quiet as you as you heard earlier and this is running it normally runs somewhere between 1800 and 2100 2200 depending on the kind of temperatures and it seems quite stable at that so this is just a little overview of the amp miner um, control panel if we look at um, slush pool now well, this is where I'm mining so this is you know just this one amp miner and you'll see don't know if you've got a scoring hash rate of just over eight tera hashes which is exactly what we're seeing uh here so that's eight thousand gig hash which is eight tera hashes um so we're seeing you know a very good correlation between that then over here we have um confirmed and unconfirmed rewards um total rewards to date i've i've had this miner for about two months now and it's generated what 0.28 Bitcoin, so 0.28 of a Bitcoin. Um, we're getting a payout. I have the payout set to 0 0.01, as you can see here. I'm getting a payout every sort of two days, nine hours. That that fluctuates slightly from about two days, four hours up to two days, 11 hours, something like that. But the estimated um, daily reward is 0 0.00428662. So we can see if we just grab the calculator here. So if we say one Bitcoin divided by 
0.0042814. We're looking at 233 days at current difficulties if nothing changed, which it always does. But we're looking at about 230 odd days to mine one Bitcoin. So at current difficulties, it should comfortably do that in, in under a year. Um, I'm hoping, based on the the figures for the last kind of couple of months, I've got just over a quarter of a Bitcoin that you know should probably get um, a full Bitcoin out of this. You know, in the first year, over a full Bitcoin, maybe one and a quarter. Then, as the difficulty increases, obviously your daily rewards will will decrease a little bit. But um, yeah, so that's a, just a quick overview. I uh, hope that's been interesting and useful. Um, I quite rate the the Antminer R4. It doesn't create too much noise which is good it does generate quite a bit of heat which you know may or may not be an issue in the winter if it's cold perfect because it'll heat your you know your office or or possibly even a you know a small apartment but in the summer you know cooling might be an issue anyway uh thanks for watching i'll see you again soon